So I'm Dr. Sophie Holland and I'm an environmental microbiologist at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I'm here with a team from a program run by the or funded by the Australian Research Council, which is called Securing Antarctica's Environmental Future, or SAFE for short. Um, and SAFE is a program spanning at least 28 institutions, mostly in Australia, but also a few worldwide. And we're interested in um, learning more about Antarctica's biodiversity and also how it's going to be affected by climate change and how we can be better stewards for the environment in Antarctica. Um, so Antarctica is a great environment for collecting scientific data because it's relatively untouched by people and by humans. And um, ecologically speaking, as a microbiologist, I find it a very interesting environment because the whole ecology tends to be a lot simpler than it is in sort of places like the tropics or rainforests. So there's less species here, which makes it a little easier when we're trying to untangle relationships between different species. So for example, between bacteria and moss or between bacteria and invertebrates, there are less factors at play, which means we can get a really good understanding of it here, which we can then take back into the broader world to understand relationships there as well. So as a microbiologist, I'm focused on bacteria in the soil and particularly in bacteria in the soil, which have been fairly recently discovered that can actually live on air. So we call them aerotrophs. And essentially what they can do is take trace levels of gas in the atmosphere, such as hydrogen, and use that as their energy source. Uh, and that's really interesting because it essentially forms the base level of the food chain in places where there might not be any other or many other energy sources. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how widespread they are because they were first discovered in Antarctica and we want to see if they're all over the continent as well as all over the world. So obviously all the soil that we've collected here is unique to the Antarctic environment and not something that we can get elsewhere. Um, so that's really helpful and particularly from the more far-flung sites. So from the mountains that we were up in a few days ago camping, um, yeah, they're places that just not very many people have been. And so it's really awesome to be able to get those unique soil samples. Um, so while we're here, we've been collecting soils from the mountains around here and also from the Schirmacher Oasis, which is a more mild coastal site. And with those soils, what we'll do is um, DNA sequencing so that we can see which bacteria are there and also sequence their whole genome so we can see what function they might be fulfilling in the soil. And then the second part is to carry out testing for whether they can use these atmospheric gases and see at what rate they can use them. And then the third part is to then simulate future climate simulations back in the lab in Melbourne and see how those things might change as the planet gets warmer and some areas of Antarctica potentially also get wetter. That's a good question. <laughs> I think the most surprising thing is not necessarily related to the science, but it's just how quiet it is here. The fact that there's just no noise at all a lot of the time, except for the cracking of the ice. I didn't think about that beforehand or expect it. I think that science and tourism uh, can overlap in Antarctica. I think it's been a really great opportunity for us to come here with White Desert because we've been able to reach different parts of the Antarctic continent than what the Australian Antarctic program traditionally goes to, which has been really helpful. And I think that tourism can also be really helpful to let people actually see the environment here, see how special it is, and then hopefully be more motivated to protect it as well.